Let's go ahead and talk about uh, the NHL playoff picture right now. And, you know, certainly there's a lot left to figure out. Uh, A few more games left before we get into, uh, you know, the bracket and what that will look like. And, of course, you know, this season has largely been dominated by the Boston Bruins. You know, they're the number one overall seed in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Looks like they're going to get the Islanders in that first-round matchup. But also it looks like that the Maple Leafs and the Lightning, that's pretty much, I believe, (laughs) been solidified as far as a first-round matchup. And, you know, we've talked about this before. You know, the Maple Leafs always underwhelm, even though the metrics absolutely love them. There there are many tweaks that they needed to make from last offseason. And, yeah, they get this just awful matchup for them in Tampa Bay where you know what they're capable of. Uh, they, they are about as, as great a pick to win the Stanley Cup as any team in the Eastern Conference. So, you know, what's a franchise to do at that point? Yeah, and, and they played last year, and it was a slugfest between these two teams. Of course, the Maple Leafs, they seem to be the better team this year and higher expectations. Of course, fans have just been disappointed year after year after year, it seems like doom and gloom come playoff time for the Toronto Maple Leafs can't get out of the first round same old story but uh they seem to be the deeper team this year in terms of futures I mean you can find Maple Leafs five to one to win the east Bruins two to one seems like it's gonna be the Bruins but what do I know and then if you are looking for a Stanley Cup champion you can find the Leafs nine to one at BetMGM You know, it's interesting because even though the Bruins, you know, are far and away the best regular season team, it's one of those deals where this matchup with the Islanders could also be a slugfest. They they could wear down and, you know, still win that first round series. But I the value it all with the Bruins at two to one. This is a deal where, yeah, they have a lot more points than everyone else, but I'm not sure, Mm -hmm. you know, with David Pasternak and company that they are head over heels better than everybody else. And you know how the Stanley Cup playoffs work. It, it can be a good bit more volatile than, you know, most any other, you know, playoff situation in sports. And so two to one, when your second place Eastern Conference winner, the Maple Leafs at five to one, I don't really like that value. I feel like you, you do need to look elsewhere, even if you believe in Boston, even if you do believe that this regular season is something that can carry, carry forward uh, in a much smaller sample size. Uh, to me, that's not the play. Uh, the, the value is just not there. It, it's interesting when I'm looking at, uh, say, Money Puck stats right now, and I'm looking at expected goal differential. If you're looking at five-on-five five hockey, uh, right now, number one is the Carolina Hurricanes. And to me, they're an intriguing value at plus 550. If the playoffs started today, the Hurricanes uh, would get the Florida Panthers, uh, the first wild card team. That, to me, is probably an easier matchup than the Islanders. And so if Mm -hmm. you're looking at path, I think that matters a great deal. Second place in terms of expected goal differential, the Devils. That is a team I really, really like. And not just because they've scored a lot of expected goals, but also, too, they're really good at defending passes that can lead to high-danger shots. And they've been that way all season long. And it looks like they're in an easier part of the bracket with fewer teams that I'm concerned with. So – Hurricanes, Devils, if you're looking at an Eastern Conference winner, uh, those might be my plays. Love it. So we do have a question from OG Plus on the Twitch chat. You can watch us on Twitch and YouTube at BetQL Daily. So this is something that you can bet on that's kind of fun. Who's going to have the worst regular season record? And now I'm just throwing this to you live, so I know that you haven't even heard this, but it's Anaheim minus 125, a team you know pretty well, Chicago plus Mm -hmm. 125, Columbus plus 160, or San Jose 44 to 1. You know, when I'm looking at projections for who's going to get the number one overall C or get the the highest probability in terms of uh, the NHL draft, uh, right now, it's looking like the Blackhawks are uh, that one team. I mean, it's interesting because Anaheim has sort of played the worst hockey uh, throughout the entire season, but they may not have the highest odds to get the number one overall pick because Chicago has found a way to lose more games. Even Columbus has sort of been a part of that conversation for a little while now. Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating because everybody is clamoring to get Connor Bedard, who is a phenom, to say the least. He will be a game changer for the team that drafts him. And so there's extra impetus to get that number one overall pick in the NHL draft. And it would be a shame if the Ducks don't get it because 
they have been seen as the 32nd ranked NHL team for pretty much the entire season. And yet every now and again, because they have some great studs with, uh, you know, Trevor Zegras, Troy Terry, you know, they're able to score in so many different ways, especially close to the net. It's, it's a deal where if they've won too much and don't get Bedard, then, you know, the franchise could be in a tricky spot. Uh, but to me, in terms of value, I probably like Chicago. Love it. Okay. So are they like purposely losing to try to get this guy? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think a few teams are uh, just because he's that good. <laughs> Uh, you know, th- this is sort of that generation's Connor McDavid, so to speak. Uh, you know, you look at uh, you know some of his play, uh, you know, at his level the last uh, several months. Uh, he's every bit as advertised. He is every bit as advertised. There is a reason why uh, Anaheim sort of you know set things up the way they did, where they really didn't spend that much money. And I think you know Chicago is sort of in that same boat, where they know what they're going after, and if they get him, uh, then it's going to be game changing. And there's a lot of Chicago fans who listen to this show because of Joe Ostrowski, so I'm sure um, they'll be eager to place that bet and hope they get him. <laughs> Absolutely. So as we talk about the Western Conference, uh, Avalanche at plus 275, the Oilers at plus 450, and that one's intriguing because Edmonton is likely going to get the LA Kings in the first round again. But I feel like that the Kings are a very much different team than they were last year when they face each other. And keep in mind, the Kings and the Oilers went seven games in that first round playoff series. Yes, the Kings are a little bit hobbled right now. They really, really need to get healthy uh, if they hope to knock off the Oilers and you know, make a run here. But since the trade deadline, defensively, the Kings have been as good as any team in the NHL. Uh, you talk about Drew Doughty and that defensive line with Mikey Anderson, that's been really good. Uh, but the gabrikov roy defensive pairing as well has been stellar. They made some moves in the offseason to bolster the offense and kind of play uh, you know, a little bit more up-tempo. And for the most part, that's worked well, but they just need to get healthy. And if they do, they are in a much better position to stifle Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. And if they do that, then I do think the Kings you know, could have a pretty decent path uh, at least getting to the Western Conference Finals. Now, the Oilers are tough. Vegas is very much tough. Vegas might be uh, the team with the most value at five to one. But again, when you're looking at the playoffs, uh, Vegas may get win up. I'm not too concerned about that. And then that second round matchup with either the Oilers or the Kings, that could be intriguing, especially with Jonathan Quick going up against his former team. That might be fun. Uh, And then the other side, uh, the Avalanche. Yeah. Well, from what I'm hearing you say, it seems like the Kings might have the most value then eight to one at Bad MGM right? To be the Western I, Conference winner? Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, they, they definitely evolved and took some real strides this season. I mean, the window isn't closing for them. They still have some time if, say, they lose in the first round. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it a disappointing season if that happened. Uh, but at the same time, they are drastically better than they were a season ago. Uh, but they are also facing a really hot Oilers team that has also improved over the course of the season. Do you feel like the winner of this Oilers King series could go on to win the West? You know, it's always about path, right? You know, we talk about that in the NBA a lot. And to me, Colorado has an easier path uh, than, say, okay. the others. Because, you know, you look at that side of the bracket, you know, Vegas can be really dangerous, though they are an unknown. Oilers, Kings. I mean, you've got three teams there uh, that you really, really like. And on the side of the Western Conference bracket – Seattle, you know, they're coming onto the scene. The goaltending and defense is a good bit. Uh, The Stars, you know, they played really, really well to start the season. Now they're a bit of an unknown. They could still be dangerous. Minnesota's okay. Uh, But, you know, path matters a great deal, and Colorado may have the easiest of it. 